Hello guys, hello, hello. I'm sorry for this big and long delay. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Yes, teacher. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. No problem. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm very sorry. I mean, uh, the power went off in the place where I live and there was no electricity and then the computer was not working properly. But we are here, so thank you very much for your patience and for being here. I understand that in some parts of El Salvador it's raining and it's raining a lot. So um, thank you so much for the ones that are here and that were very patient in waiting for me. So it is our, what, our 13th class today. So we only have three more classes and we're going to be done, guys. So, um, I hope that you at least, you know, try to practice on, on the weekend because as I told you last week, we have an exam on Thursday and we haven't changed that. So um, as usual, as I do every single time, I'm going to ask you questions regarding to the last topic that we saw. Uh, what do you guys remember about the last topic? Or you don't remember? Nothing at all. We were talking about the prepositions. Yes, we were talking about prepositions and what, how many types of prepositions do we have? Three. And which are they? The place, the time. Place, time, and what else? Direction. Uh, direction. Direction. Okay, now can, between, can can someone, yeah, can someone tell me at least three prepositions of directions? Three. Three examples, I mean. Between inside, next to near uh -huh. the sample next to and the the high school. Are, are those for directions? Are you that those are for directions or, or for place? And direction. Directions, are you sure? Yeah. About cross. Across, that's that's one. Okay. What else? Um Behind. 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 Yes. Corner. At the corner, you said. Between. Between. Oh, teacher. Next to. So, say that again, Katya. And on. No. On. Do you mean letter O N? Is that what you're saying? On the corner. On the next one. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. In that. In that case. Yeah. We can also use that. Uh, all right, so basically we were talking about prepositions. We have three types of prepositions. And today, guys, today's topic is not complicated, but it's, have you ever heard of present perfect before? ¿Alguna vez han escuchado de present perfect? Do you know what present perfect is? That's my question. Or do you have any idea about present perfect? It's in, in this topic, guys, we're going to go back and what is going to be a little bit different from the simple past is that in present perfect, we are going to use the past participle of the verse. What does that mean? That is the part that I, that I showed you when we saw the simple past. So just let me go ahead and share the screen with you. So you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Let me see. Can you see the can you see this the slides by any chance? No teacher, I don't see. You don't see it? No teacher. Está pensando todavía, teacher. Oh my god, today that, that doesn't want, want to help me today. I mean it's it's, it's a better slow. All, all the I get. Oh, okay. I see teacher. All right, cool. Thank you very much. 
Now, as you can see there, and as I said at the beginning, today is our 13th class. And we just have like tomorrow class and Wednesday class. I'm sorry for the background. It's like there's a lot of frogs. I don't know if you can listen to them. Just let me make this bigger. This Give me a moment. All right, so we have that. So can everyone see the, the slides? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. All right. Yes, the second. Present perfect. Present perfect. Okay, thank you. So just let me try to do some woods man here. Oh my God, today everything is very like very, very slow. Okay, but here we go. <laughs> So, all right, so as I was saying, guys, the present perfect, we have a little bit of an explanation here. We have, um, let me see, uh, can I have a volunteer to help me reading the first two lines? My teacher, Nidia. Go ahead, Nidia, please. In English, we use, uh, we use the present perfect tense uh, to tell about experience and events in the past week are true or still mm -hmm. happening right now. It often doesn't have a specific, a specific time for when it happens. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as, you, as we read there, guys, the present perfect actually, it's something that started on the past something that an, or an action that we did in the past like experiences or events which occurred in the past but they don't have a precise time or a specific time what does it mean is that you did it in the past then probably next week or the week before or the week later you did it once again then you did the action you repeated the next week and you repeated and you repeated it till the present so it is an action that you have not been repeating every single day, but you have repeated the same action for a period of time. And you will probably are doing the same action up until right now, or you will probably will still be doing the same action in some part of the future. So we have a timeline here, and I don't know if every one of you can see it. We have here past, and all these lines show you a little bit of what the present perfect is. We have also some examples here, which are going to help you probably to understand a little bit more. When we say, I have been to Paris, I have been to Paris. What does it mean? That probably a year ago, you went to Paris. Then you stayed in Paris for one year, for two years, for five years, for 15 years, whatever. But it is an action that you have been still doing, probably not every single day, but that's, uh, that's something that started there and it's an action that you're still doing because probably you're still living in Paris and you will be still living in Paris for next week. I don't know if that idea is a little bit understandable or if, if everyone, is everyone understanding what I'm saying or do you have any kind of doubt? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, we're, we're still kind of getting signal today. Um, I have been. Uh, were, you, were you saying something, Boris? Yes, yes, teacher. Uh, when you say, when we say, uh, I have been to Paris, but we still, uh, we, we are the, in Paris. Mm -hmm. we're still, So, okay. So I mean, I don't. I, I I really don't know if your question was if the action is still at the present. I mean, an action. Yeah. That, yeah. Exactly. It's an action that we did in the past. Because I was saying, I mean, we will probably move or we went to Paris like five years ago, but still in the present, you're probably living there. 
and probably next month you're going to be still living there. So it, it is an action that doesn't have a specific period of time. It is not only what we have to understand is that we started on the past, but we're still doing that action. That's what it means. Or we Thank you. Teacher. Yes. Eh, es como que si en español, digamos, um, yo he comido ese sándwich, así como el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Yes. O yo he estado en París hace como tanto tiempo exactly. para expresar algo que pasó, pero eh, utilizamos en este caso el auxiliar have para, como para demostrar que lo hicimos. Yes, yes, you have, you have something there. Yes, okay. we use the auxiliary have for the personal pronouns I, you, we, they. And we use the auxiliary has for the third person, which is he, she, and it. Yo he estado. It's like we, when we translate it, it's like yo he estado en París. I have. Es pasado, ¿verdad? It's not, no es una acción. Suena como pasado. Pero no es, no estamos hablando en pasado, algo así, ¿verdad? It, it's like, for example, si tú me dices yo he estado en París, pero... Uh -huh. Todavía estás viviendo en París. O sea, la acción me dijiste que he estado. Sí, has estado todo este tiempo en París. Y uh -huh. todavía vives ahí. Probablemente el otro mes todavía estés viviendo ahí. Eso no tiene un tiempo específico. So, okay. Eso es una acción que iniciamos allá, pero todavía la seguimos haciendo. Ok, thank you, teacher. All right. So, uh, as it says here, it doesn't matter whether it was recent, like eating sandwiches, or many years ago, like moving to London. The present perfect tense tell us up, up until the present, the event or the experience has occurred. That's what I was saying. It's an action that Obviously, we started in the past, but we're still doing that action. It doesn't have a specific time. So let's move on to the next one. And let's see. Here we have the auxiliaries that we are going to use. The auxiliaries, which are the auxiliary have for the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And has for he, she, and it. So that's what we have to understand, actually. Just the auxiliaries that we are going to use for these stems. Now, let's move on to the next one. And here we have the way that we can identify the present perfect. How's that? Let me see. Um, William, can you help me, please, William? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Identify the present perfect tense. The present perfect tense is for or using have or has plus the past participle. This might sound confusing, but it's pretty easy when you can spot the patterns. The patterns. Okay, as it says there. We are going to use the auxiliaries have and has plus the past participle. Do you remember that when we saw the simple past, I told you, probably we're going to uh, see the present perfect later on. So remember that when we saw the irregular verbs that I showed you the simple past and the, pres and the past participle. So for this tense, present perfect, En este tiempo del presente perfecto donde vamos a utilizar el past participle de los verbos. So that's why I was telling you, it's necessary that you study the verbs. Estoy seguro que a este punto los verbos que vimos allá hace una semana ya no se acuerdan. I'm pretty sure about it. If I ask you, I don't know if some of you are going to be able to, to answer to the past part, to the past or now that we're going to see the past participle. As it says here, this might sound confusing, but it's pretty easy once you can spot the patterns. Which are the patterns? Of course, we can say subject, I do with they, he, she, it. Auxiliaries have or has, depending on the subject, and past participle and a complement, of course. So we have 
I have lived in Scotland all my life. Or I have moved house four times in my life. I have owned a car since I was 18. Or I have visited many countries in Europe. Normally, guys, we are going to use the present perfect when we talk about real facts or real things that have happened to us. So most of the time, we're going to use it in that way. So is there any questions so far, guys? Are you understanding what we're, what we're trying to, to learn today? Or is there any doubt, any hesitation or something that you might be wondering? No? All right. Now let me just- Teacher. Move. One question, teacher. Go ahead. O sea, de que se van a utilizar solo verbos en participio cuando se utilice ese have. Pasado participio. Siempre. Cuando tengamos el present perfect, verbos en pasado participio. Ya no va a ser en past. Thank you, teacher. So I will say this in Spanish because I need you to really understand what I'm going to say. Necesito que en realidad entiendan. Para los, para los regular verbs es algo muy fácil. ¿Por qué? Sabemos que los regular verbs ya sabemos que terminan en ed y esa es la simple past. Es la forma pasada. Más. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que para el pasado participio en los regular verbs Va a ser la misma del pasado. No cambia. Eso es algo muy fácil para los regular verbs. Pero ¿qué pasa con los irregular verbs? Ellos sí van a cambiar drásticamente del simple past a past parsing. So for the regular verbs, it's going to be really easy for you just to add ed at the end. Vamos a ver si se recuerdan de las... What are the three... Sounds of pronunciations that we have with the regular verbs. Hmm. Pretty close, but. Me falta la última. E teacher. Uh huh. D and E D. Mm -hmm. D E D and what else? D. E? And T, yes. Now, let me see. I will need everyone to participate right now. We're 26. So let me see, uh, Katia Graciela. Let's go and help me making the pronunciation of the first three verbs, these three that we have at the very beginning. Okay, teacher. Ask, mm -hmm. bake, mm -hmm. brushed. Okay, now let me see, William. I need you to help me with these three verbs that we have at the end of the list. This one's right here. Uh, oh, esos tres que me está señalando, teacher. Yeah, this one, this one, and this one. So the last three. Okay. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. What? What? And work. Okay, let me see Anna Noemi. Let's okay. put the next three. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. Cook it. Mm -hmm. Crack it. Crush it. Okay, let me see uh, bodies. Let's go with you, Boris. Let's go with the first three of this part. Agree, allowed, answered. It is Regina. I need your help with the next three, please. Uh, we cannot listen to you, Iris. No, you have your microphone off. Appear. Mm -hmm. Appear, arrive, believe. Thank you very much. Mayra, 
I need your help with the first three of this part. Accepted, attended, arrested. Thank you very much, Elmer. Let's go with this part here. We, we, we're not listening to you. Danced. Dress, dressed. Uh -huh. Dropped. That was really good in, with the verb danced and dropped, but with dressed, you miss the T at the end. But thank you very much. Nivia, let's go with you in this part. A real believe partner. Okay, Cecilia Hernandez. Now let's go with you with this part. Waited, wanted, was, was. Okay, thank you very much. Let me see Andrea Mariel. Let's go with you in this part. Andrea Mariel. Sorry, teacher, I have a problem with my connection. Okay, needed. Painted. Planted. Okay, thank you very much. Elba Carolina, we we'll go with you and these ones here. Hey, right. are you there? Yes, teacher. Let's go with you starting from here. Perform, performed, pulled, realized. Thank you very much. Ingrid, are you there? Yes, teacher. Let's go with you here. Float, graduated, paid. Elude, are you there? Elude? Miss, pass it, pass it. Edith Araceli, let's go with you. Okay. Pick, press, push. Vidal Mejia, let's go with you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Pronounce. Mm -hmm. Relax. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Emily Sofia. Now let's go with you. Rain. Mm -hmm. uh, what is? Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, rent, state, shirt. Thank you very much. Now Maritza Isabel. So, mm -hmm. study. You can hear me. You can listen me. Okay. And the last one is going to be Ana Mayora. We're going to go with you on this part. Repeat. Report. Mm -hmm. Respect. Okay, guys, listening to you all, I can see that some of you really, oh, Carlos, you didn't participate, Carlos Regalado. Okay, let's go with you. I just saw you. Let's go. Carlos. You. Uh huh. This thing. Mm -hmm. Leave you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Carlos. Now, as I was saying, uh, I'm sorry, guys, for the background noise. It's like a lot of frogs. I don't know if you can listen to that to that sound. 
That's very, but that's that's nature. So I cannot I cannot do that with that sound. Even they have like a concert. It's like a concert. I mean, the place where I live is a, <laughs> a very big farm. So there's a lot of animals right here. And because it's raining, when it rains, frogs make a concert. And it's like, I cannot change. Yeah. It's like nature. It's very natural. Oh, natural. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry for that. Uh, well, as I was... Don't worry, we okay. Um, I heard some of your pronunciations and some of you are doing a really good pronunciation. Some of you are forgetting the pronunciations. All of these ones in this list uh, have the pronunciation T, T as in tomato. And all of these ones in the second part, they have the pronunciation D as in David. And this one here, they have the pronunciation ED. So when I listen to some of you, for example, I heard that someone said, push it, something like that, or press it. We don't say like that, guys. Pressed, pushed, pronounced. So we have to be really careful there and we still have to be, you know, improving a little bit of our pronunciation because we still have to work on that. Now, that was the part for the regular verbs. Now let's go with the regular ones. As you remember, it changes here. So uh, let me see if you guys remember a little bit about it. So can I have uh, one volunteer right now? Me teacher. Okay, help me with, with the first three birds. Read the infinity, I'm sorry, read the infinity, then you read the simple past and then the past parts. Let's go. Okay. Arise, arose, arising. Awake, awaken it, awoke, awaken it, awoken. The next one. Thank you very much. Uh, now, can I have another person help me read in another three verbs? Me, teacher, Katya. Katya, yeah. let's go, Katya. Thank you very much. And then we'll okay. go with bodies. Beat. No, oh, beer. Ah, mm -hmm. okay, teacher. Beer, born, born, born. Mm -hmm. And the other. Beat, 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 beating. Okay. Sure. Become, became, was, uh -huh. become. Thank you very much. Now let's go with boys. Teacher, what is yes. the different beard and beard? <laughs> beard and beard? What What do you mean? What What do you mean by that? Beard, the, the, the drink? Cerveza. Yes. <laughs> Oh, the beer. drink. Yes. Oh, this, this is, this is, this is, uh, this one here, this verb, we call it something. The pronunciation. Oh, you mean the pronunciation? Yes. There's not a big difference because uh, in English we have something that we call homophonous or uh, palabras homophonas que se pronuncian igual pero significan de diferente cosa. So we say beer and beer. So that's oh, that's okay. not a big difference. ¿Cuál es la diferencia de context? That's it. Uh, and beer is beer the uh, you oh, mean the beer. also teacher? Oh no, that's bear. Bear. Ah, okay. That's Thank bear. you, teacher. <laughs> All right. So teacher, <laughs> sorry. I have a question. What's your question? Uh, in the fight, what is the difference in the beer? One, two, three. Four, five. Eat, beat, yes. Eat, beat. We don't have a difference. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. So now let's go with um, Boris. Me, teacher. Boris. Mm -hmm. Be begin, begun, begun. Okay. El uh, no, that's so Ben, 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 Ben. Mm -hmm. Bet, 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 
Thank you very much. Elmer, let's go with you, Elmer. Bill, 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 Thank you very much. Now, can I have the last person? Well, I will ask for Carlos Regalado. Carlos, go ahead and help me with the last two, please. Bye. Did. Bye. Okay. Blue. Mm -hmm. Did. Blue. Okay, thank you very much for those who helped me in the pronunciation part. We still, guys, once again, we're still having the same issue that we had when we saw simple past. Siempre seguimos teniendo los mismos problemas que tuvimos cuando vimos el simple past. So eso significa que algunos de ustedes no han estado estudiando los verbos. I really don't know what's going on or what happened with you, but Estos son los mismos verbos que vimos allá en simple past. So didn't you study the verbs or have you been studying the verbs or you don't have time or what's going on? I mean, it's up to you. Remember, it's your decision if you want to study them or not. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm only going to make the pronunciation of the past participle form because that's the one that we're going to use for the present perfect. So pay attention, please, to the pronunciation at, at home, and you can pronounce by yourself there, okay? So we have arisen, awaked, awoken, being, born, born, beaten, become, begun, bent, Bet, bedded, Biden, bid, bound, beaten, bled. All right. So that's the pronunciation that you don't have to remember, at least for this time. Why? Because now we're talking about the present perfect. So those are the ones that we are going to use with the present perfect. For example, if I want to say, uh, mm, let me see. I have, um, hmm. He sangrado por dos horas. How would you say that? Can you write or can you tell me like orally? Como dirían esa frase? Yo he sangrado por dos horas. I have, I have bled. I have, I have for bled two for two hours. For two hours. Okay. Now, how would you say, um, like, uh, he doblado ropa por dos días? I have been. 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 But today, for today, for two days. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much for that. Now, let's move on to another part. Uh, this, this is another list of the verbs, but we are just going to make the pronunciation of the past participle form. So pay attention. This one is drawn, dreamed, dreamed, drunk, driven, Eaten, fallen, fed, felt, fought, found, fled, flown, forbidden, forecast, forgotten. Okay, now let me listen to a volunteer. Can I have a volunteer to read them all? Me, teacher. Okay. Katia. Katia, let's go. Read them all, please. Drown. 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 No, it's not Dr drown. No, it's not, le no, it's la letra. It's like, oh. Drown. Like that. Mm -hmm. Dreamed. Dream. Mm -hmm. 
drunk, driven, eaten, mm, fallen, okay, feed, fed, fell, fell, felt, fought, fought, just just fought. the letter O. Fought, mm -hmm. found, fled, flaunt, forbidden, flown, forbidden, forecast, forgotten. 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 Thank you very much. Now, you, uh, the last person, one more person. Meet the chair. Okay, Anna, let's go. Drown. Dream. Drown. Drown, sorry. Drown. Dreamed. Dreamed. Drunk. Driving. Eating. Falling. Feet. Fed. Fed. No, that's fed. 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 Fought. Found. Fled. Float. Forbidden. Forbidden. For for beating, forecast, for garden. Thank you very much. That was really good. Now let's move on to the next part. And in this part, we're going to have, or we're going to see uh, some important things in, in which we're going to use the present perfect. Number one, as it says there, we're going to use the present perfect to express a present result of the past. We have an example there. He hasn't done his homework. Alguna vez todos fuimos ese niño, vea? Cuando le estaban poniendo queja al papá que no había hecho la tarea. So he hasn't done his homework. So as it says there, we're expressing a result of the past action. It means that this little kid was in class, but he didn't do his homework. So he hasn't done his homework for a while. So that's why we're going to use, or in that occasion, we're going to use the present perfect. Now, part number two, we're going to use the, the present perfect, of course, to express a life experience using expressions such as ever or never. For example, most of the time we are going to use ever when we have a, a question to ask a question or to say something like, have you ever been a child? When someone, or if someone asks you that question, what do you think that question means? What's the meaning of that? Alguna vez fuiste un niño? Alguna vez fuiste o has sido niño? So if someone asks you that question, well, let's see. Si alguien les hace esa pregunta, ¿cómo responden? Can you please give me an opinion? Yes, I, yes, I have been a child. Yes, I have been a child. What else? Can someone else give me another opinion? Yes, I have. I was a child. Say that again. Podría ser una respuesta corta. Yes, I have been. Yes, I have been. Mm, interesting. Okay, when we say, when we talk about short answers, cuando hablamos de preguntas o respuestas cortas, we only say, yes, I have, no, yes, I have been. So if someone asks you, I, have you ever been a child? You can only say, yes, I have, no, I have not, or no, I haven't. Or if you want to give long answer, you are going to say, yes, I have been a child or no, I have never been a child. So what I was trying to tell you is that never, we're going to use it in a negative way, okay? So, uh, Teacher, yes. Se puede contestar con, con, con una respuesta que no tenga el auxiliar a high, por ejemplo, yes, of course, o oh, yeah. I've been. Uh, I mean, if, if we say something like that, it doesn't mean like it's not correct. Of course, that is going to be really understandable. But oh, okay. to like to speak a very formal or very professional English, 
you have to say something like, yes, I have. Nevertheless, it will also, um, it will also be understandable if you if you say something like yes of course it's, it's more but informal that's, that's very very informal okay thank you mm -hmm. so do you guys have any other questions so far so far so good teacher uh, Never, never is going to be used only for negatives. Solo para negativos. Okay. Never. And ever va a ser una decisión de ustedes si la, si la utilizan o no. Porque, let me tell you this, this one. I can simply or easily, puedo decir, uh, have you been a child? I can say that. That's, that's completely understandable and grammatically correct. But if you add, si le agregas la palabra ever, it's like, le das un poquito más de emphasis, like say it like that. You emphasize a little bit more because esa ever es como alguna vez. So you give it more like, like more sense to that, but it will be up to you. En realidad va a depender del contexto. It's a little bit about the context. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Teacher, one example with um, never, please. Okay, we can say, let me, let me try to write that down. Let me see. For example, I can say, no, I have never. Like that. So we're going to do the, the exact location. La posición de never is going to be between, entre the... You know the uh, the auxiliary and the verb in past participle. Entre medio del, del auxiliar y el verbo en past participle. That is going to be the location, the exact location for the word never. Does that help you, Cecilia? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. In negative, también podría contestar, no, I haven't. Yes, you can say something like, it's not necessary to use never all the time. So you can simply say, no, I have, I have not, or you can use the contraction, haven't. Okay, oh, like something like that. So you can say something like that. So it will be up to you. It's not necessary to use never all the time. You can use either one of those. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you for asking that. So any other questions so far, guys? Are we understanding what we're, what we're trying to do here? Well, I hope so. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. All right, because we're having some exercises later on, so that will be really nice if you understood that. So part number three, we're talking about unfinished past. Cosas que no han pasado. That's what I was saying. That's what I was telling you when we started and when we saw like a little bit of the explanation of the present perfect. As you can see here, si se pueden fijar acá, estas, let's, like, that's a friendship. Es una amistad that like, started like long ago when they were childs, cuando eran amigos. Y miren los cambios de niños a adultos. ¿Cuántos años habrán pasado? 20 years. Entonces, es una acción que se vino haciendo por todo este tiempo. Por eso es que el present perfect es una acción indefinida. No tiene tiempo. ¿Sí? So that's why we say, they have been friends for 20 years. Ellos han sido amigos por 20 años. Han sido, lo sé, y pro, lo siguen siendo en el presente y lo seguirán siendo en el futuro. Probably. So it's an action, an unfinished past. Por eso le llamamos unfinished past. Que es un pasado que no ha terminado. It's still going on. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. And here we have to present new information. For example, wow, I've got a five. That's like we're giving new information information that we didn't have before. So we have also another one of the same one. 
it says like, for example, when you're reading, when you're reading the paper, uh, like, you know, the news or something like that, you can see some information or some titles of the news, like the police have arrested two men. This is like new information or in uh, like, if you were reading like news on the internet or something like that, you can see the titles of the new. Sometimes they are going to use the present perfect because they are going to be introducing new information to you. Okay. Uh, so do you have any question or this is really clear at this point? It's clear. Thank you very much. So Sir, I have a question, sorry. Um, no, it's okay, it's okay. Ask the question. Eh, entiendo que el have es como auxiliar, ¿verdad? Pero veo yeah. que seg según el, el sujeto, eh, mm -hmm. depende de la acción, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, en el ejemplo que acaba de dar, the police have arrested, es como detener, ¿verdad? Si fuera así traducido literalmente al español, eh, el auxiliar como verbo fuera como detener algo y si fuera de una acción se tomara como has aunque no se traduce literal verdad por eso se usa indistintamente uh, well I, I don't know if I understood <laughs> es, que, es que estaba pensando diciendo que dijo que la policía tiene arrestado dos hombres verdad eso así lo entendió Ajá, pero en este caso, eh, have es, como, es el verbo tener, ¿verdad? Y el has es como de has, como de hacer, ¿verdad? Algo así. No, 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 por really. Eso es que no. Se usan en, por eso es que se tienen que usar los participios, ¿verdad, profe? Que tienen que ir juntas las dos. Yeah, so I, I think that you have, got, you have gotten confused. Yo creo que te has confundido un poquito, Ana. So, have, has, los dos van a significar an, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. So if I say the police has, es como la policía ha arrestado. Ajá, eso es lo que quiero preguntar. Y si, y si tengo have, va a significar lo mismo. No puedo decir la ah, okay. policía ha tenido arrestado. No, that's not correct. So aquí ah. si la policía ha arrestado. En este caso, arrestado. como Ajá. para indefinir, indefinir la, la acción, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Y alguien se podría preguntar, hey, teacher, pero the police no me está diciendo si es un policía, porque si fuera un policía, yo no tendría. ¿Qué es lo que tendría? Ah, también eso le iba a preguntar. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. Es, es, es bueno preguntar, that's, that's why. So, porque no hay un sujeto, sino que como un, un sujeto tácito, ¿verdad? que no se menciona así es. We're, we're not exactly specifying, no estamos uh -huh. especificando. So, no sabemos si es un policía o hay más, but esto, tomamos, como tú dices, Ana, un sujeto no identificado. Like, uh -huh. Cuando decimos la policía, los, la policía en este caso nos referimos al grupo de la policía. So that's why por eso es que utilizamos have. Pero si nos refiriéramos a un policía, este have cambiaría por qué? ¿Por qué auxiliar? Por has. Por has. has. So, mm -hmm. Por diríamos, has. a police has arrested two men. Ahí es diciendo que un policía arrestó a dos hombres. Si entendemos la idea, do we understand the idea? Sí. Yo creo okay. que sí, porque si le quitamos el, el auxiliar en este caso, bien podríamos ocupar solamente el verbo en pasado, arrested, ¿verdad? Arrestó. Yeah, I mean, arrestó. Yeah, we can, we can say that. We, the, I mean, it's completely fine if you say the police arrested two men. Por eso decimos la policía arrestó dos, dos, dos hombres. Y es por eso que cuando introducimos nueva información, en vez de utilizar el pasado, bien si la acción ya sucedió, utilizamos el present perfect, porque es una acción que probablemente siga repitiéndose. You know? No tiene algo... Si, en... no, ya no fuera, si no, ya no fuera eh, pasado presente. Pero... Si no, ya, que fuera pasado. Pero... It will be, ya sería pasado okay. en el auxiliar. Okay. So, por Thank eso you, es, que es necesario. 
Thank you, teacher. I'm seats. sorry for the question more. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. That's that's perfect. In that way, probablemente alguno de tus compañeros que no quiera preguntar porque le da pena y tenía la misma duda que tú, I say everyone's help each other. So, we have for the fifth uh, part, we have uh, that we can use the phrase, it is the first time. Esta frase, we can use, it is the first time that something has happened. So, podemos utilizar esta frase, and then we can use the present perfect. So, we can say something like, oh, it is the first time I have won the lottery. Es la primera vez que he ganado la lotería. You see? When we have this phrase, when we have this phrase at the beginning, we can use present perfect. Okay? Or even if we don't have it, we can still say, I have won the lottery. But when you use the phrase, it is the first time, you are already specifying that is your first time. So it's like a specific information about it. That's why it says something, it is the first time that something has happened to you in this case, okay? So I hope it is really understandable so far. So if there's any other, if there's <laughs> like, like more or less, eh? okay. So, all right, so. Here we have like a very detailed information of what you saw. This is very, uh, very specific. And it will be really fine if you understand the like, you see? How do we make questions? How do we make negatives? How do we make affirmatives? It's explained here. Subject, auxiliary, past participle for affirmatives, negatives, subject, auxiliary, negative, and past participle. Questions. Auxiliary first, then the subject, and then the past participle, and of course, question at the end. So it's not no more like how to get lost in this. It's very simple, actually. Probably the most difficult part for you in this case is going to be the verbs. I guess that's going to be the, the most difficult part for you. The verbs or trying to remember how to say or how to pronounce the verbs in the right way. So any questions so far, or are we clear with this information till, till the moment? So if there's no any other question, we're going to go to the, to the practice. We have the conversation, I mean, because it's really big conversation. What I need you to do guys is like one person for letter A, one person for letter B, another person for A, another for B, and so on and so on and so on. So everyone can participate, okay? Because it takes too much time when we do it just in couple, because it takes a lot of time if we do so. So, um, you know, when you're done, so I can move to the real practice, which is going to be with the verbs in present perfect, of course. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Eh, eh, que me pusiera la, 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 la presentación anterior, la, la, la diapositiva anterior, para tomar nota. This one, you mean? Is, is that the one you want? Well. Eh, well, I don't know if that was the one, but I, I hope so. So, okay, here we have, so I hope, okay, there we go. So let me know, please, when you're done so I can move on. Is that okay? Okay, teacher. And this is the last part. So if that is okay, so I will stop sharing and we're going to go directly okay. to, the, to the workout rooms. So just let me move on here. And um, well, guys, as I always tell you, please try to 
Uh, let me see, we're creating. Uh, let me see. Try to speak in English, please, guys. I will always ask you to do that. Oh my God, that's the one too. Jesus Christ, he's not helping me this today. My Lord, oh my God. So I will have to move some people for another. Okay, I will have to move here. And I will have to move this person here. Well, this doesn't want to help me today, guys. I'm very sorry today. I was not expecting these things today, but you know, things happen when we never expect them. So, so just let me move on here. Don't worry, teacher. All right, so let's go. Let's go and let's join your groups. Get healthier, trying to keep smoking. Really good for you. Hope your new jobs be the way. Jobs good. I get along well with everyone there, my co workers, man management, and the pay is pretty good too. I'm Shaving up for a new car now. Nice. Oh, do you have any idea how much a top hotel my my birthday? A dog hotel? Not sure. Around forty bucks. Why? Well, we're looking. Where to live, Rex? wife. We are in Whistler, so I need to think of if there any good, reasonable price place. We don't want to take it with good time. Oh, we can look after him.
Well, guys, probably you, you didn't even start the exercises. Some of you probably only did the, the conversation part. So I know there was not enough time. So we're just gonna wait for the other ones to come back to the main session and let's see how it, go, how it went. So just let me see, I can see some people still in the workout rooms. Yes, some of them are still there. Well, okay, guys. So um, as I was saying to some of your classmates before you, you came back to the session, uh, probably some of you were not even able to start the exercises because that was not enough time. So probably some of you only practice the conversation, but I mean, at least to try to, um, you know, to do the conversation at least. So before we go, guys, I just want to say thank you very much for your patience. Because I mean, you were here, even though I was like 20 minutes later. So I do really appreciate that. So um, hope uh, tomorrow doesn't happen the same thing. Uh, so um, thank you very much for that. And remember, if you haven't finished the platform yet, you still have this week. And I saw that some of you already completed it. And some of you already received the certificate. Some others probably because of the time haven't completed it yet, but haven't, you still have until Thursday. And if you already completed it, it's fine. I'll meet what I'm saying, okay? So thank you so much once again, guys. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow at the same time by the same channel, okay? So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.